Hi, I'm John Mount. I'm a principal consultant at a data science consulting company called WinVector LLC. I'm here to tell you about my new video course, Campaign Response Testing. This is a course that teaches you how to design and measure sales campaigns. A response-based campaign is a type of sales or marketing campaign where you're sending a message out to one or more populations or price points or with different ad messages. What you're trying to measure is the response rate of each population. In our example, the populations will be two different sets of envelopes. Our campaign consists of 10 large envelopes and 10 small envelopes. Our action is sending these envelopes out as a marketing message. Whenever a small envelope succeeds, it is worth 10 cents. Whenever a large envelope succeeds, it is worth 25 cents. Turns out, two of the large envelopes succeeded for a total campaign value of 50 cents or 5 cents per envelope sent. For the small envelope campaign, four succeeded for a total campaign value of 40 cents or 4 cents per envelope sent. The question is, which campaign do we like more? Which one would we want to continue to many more envelopes? The large envelope one appeared to be worth more in total, however, it had a much smaller count, so we are unsure about the reliability of that estimate from this initial experiment. This course will teach you how to answer these questions. These are actually fairly technical statistical questions. The standard way to approach them is to use a statistical testing framework such as a t-test. T-tests are very good techniques. They can solve many problems, such as estimating rates, estimating weights, estimating values. Because we are going to only answer the question of rates, we can actually specialize a method. We're going to specialize a Bayesian technique that is normally a bit hard to calculate with. However, we are going to remove this difficulty by wrapping the technique in an interactive worksheet, which we will share. In fact, I will share and demonstrate the worksheet at the end of this promotional video. If what I have just said is enough for you to figure out everything, then you're free to take the worksheet and you will not need the video course. If you want to know what care and precautions need to be taken when using such a worksheet, I strongly recommend you take this video course. Before the demonstration, just a bit more about myself. I've run research groups both in traditional science and data science for well over 15 years. I am also one of the co-authors of the popular and highly regarded book, Practical Data Science with R. But let's move on to our demonstration. Let's work our quick demonstration. This will be a little telegraphic, but working through this in detail and explaining things is the content of the course. To demonstrate the campaign evaluation application, we just need to go to this URL. That brings up the campaign planner and evaluator. We'll only do an evaluation. We type in the details of the campaign we actually ran. 10 envelopes with two successes, each success worth a quarter dollar. 10 envelopes with four successes, each success worth a tenth of a dollar. And we'll also put in a target wish price. We want to see if either of these outcomes is consistent with a population that has a value per action of seven cents. That builds the following graph. Campaign two was the campaign that returned four 10 cent successes and has an average price of action around four cents. Campaign one was the one that returned two successes worth 25 cents each and has an average value of action of around five cents. The wish price of seven cents is this dotted line and what the graph is showing is the difference in means we saw, the distribution of possible unknown intensities of these populations, that's the quantity to be measured, and how much area is above the wish line. We see at this test size there's a 65 percent chance that campaign one was in fact results from a larger value population. Obviously, 65% chance means there's still a 35% chance the answer is the other campaign. And typically, we want to drive this probability of error down. At least below 5% is very typical. In our course, we'll work through actual explanations of these numbers, where they come from, and how to perform useful variations and experiments in this worksheet. I very much hope you take the course.